only the second James Bond thriller could be more exciting than the first. Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Okay, we are in, as all of you know, a pretty celebratory year. It feels like every year that we have some sort of proclivity to James Bond is a celebratory year, but here we are. It's a couple of movies. We know that there's a 40th anniversary of Octopussy. We've got Live and Let Die. That's the 50th anniversary, but we got the granddaddy this year of Bond movies, it seems, in the 60th anniversary of From Russia With Love. It's the second Bond outing, and of course, the second for Sean Connery. And why is this, for many people, the pinnacle of James Bond films? It's some people's number one. It hasn't always struck my number one, but times they do change attitudes, opinions, they do change. And as I get a little bit grayer, I don't know if I could get grayer, David, you're, you're, you're completely silver. But as I get older and I appreciate different aspects of the film, maybe coming off of the newer films, I'm appreciating the older films I'm re-exploring. So let me tell you what happened. Not too long ago, well, about a week ago, I was around the house and I had what I call a lump day. This is something that my wife and I do where we've been working very hard, I'm juggling a lot of things, a lot of business, a lot of family, and I just want to lump. I want to exist on my couch and, and, and be, be one with the couch. I want to eat bad food and make bad decisions about drinks, etc. and then I'll put something on the TV that I can just veg and relax with. In this particular case, I thought, holy cow, you know what I haven't seen in a long time? From Russia with love. And I put it on and I sat back and a certain amount of reverence went through me. A certain amount of respect. Now, let me explain what this means. There are some Bond films out there, I don't know about you, that I can watch while multitasking. I put it on the background, I glance up every now and then, I can do the two screen, maybe I'm posting on Instagram, and I'm watching a Bond film. This is not one of them. This is one that I want to sit down, I want to get my food and drink, I don't want to get up and go to the bathroom, I want to watch it straight through, I want to concentrate because From Russia With Love is that type of film. So a part of me was like, you know what? I'm having a lump day, I've got my food, I've got my focus. I am going to really see, has this film become more appreciated by more? Seems like it has to others. And could this actually climb higher in my personal ranking? Well, let me flip to the end if you're incredibly impatient. Uh, it has, this was, such an incredible experience and clearly the type of experience that I wanted to talk about. So let's start about at the very beginning. The look and feel and the sound of this film was amazing. Now I watched it, this is important, I watched it in 4K and I watched it on TV, great TV, 80 inches, big, great sound coming my way, everything was going for me closed the shades, made it like a movie theater. That was the environment. Had my drink, had my food, so everything was going for me. So yeah, that's important because, I mean, how you see these things, if you're watching this on an airplane, on the back of somebody's seat, with a little kid pummeling that, or, you know, somebody's, you know, body odor wafting, wafting, wafting into your nose, not the best environment to watch from Russia with love. I had the perfect environment. Comfy, I had a bathroom close to me, it was my own home. Me. So it was the perfect environment, but I noticed immediately what this film looked like. It was beautiful. It is shot beautifully. The color is sumptuous. The way the people look, and I know this is gonna sound strange and not an aspect I've typically talked about. The way the people looked, they were all not just beautiful, not just physical specimens. That's easy, right? It's a Bond film. Of course, they're gonna, they're gonna pick Comely, I said comely, not only comely people. Look it up. I'm telling you, just everybody was perfectly angled and the lighting was perfect. And I just feel like we were getting the best version of every character that you see. So already, I mean, few minutes in, I'm getting that feeling. And something else happened. And I don't know if this happens with you when you watch a Bond film for like, I don't know, the hundredth time. And who knows how many times I've watched this, but. It's been a lot. I started to feel tense 
like even in the beginning, you know, when, when Red Grant is, is focused on hunting down the foe, Sean Connery Bond, I was like, ooh, you know, what, what's, what's gonna, I, I know what's gonna happen. You know what's going to happen, but you feel this tenseness where suddenly you're starting to move into the movie. And that's something I wanna point out that the best Bond films do. I know, typically we think about, oh, look at the fashion and, and, and look at the story and, and the henchmen and is this a bad, good bad guy? Why am I doing this voice? Because I'm imitating myself. But in this case, it, for me, the measurement, the analysis this time was how much is the movie making me escape from my everyday crazy stressful life? How much is it pulling me in to the screen and into the moment and making me a spectator, a third party omniscient to everything that's going on? And this film killed it. I mean, it kills it because you get into the story. Now, Dr. No, I've got a incredibly soft place in my heart for Jamaica, the fantasy of it, the look of it. It's, it's like a vacation film. It's the first, I mean, all those things come into play, but this one, this one destroys Dr. No on story. I'm sorry. It just does. I mean, this is espionage and intrigue and cold war and, you know, setting traps. And it is not just in the film with some of the characters, but it is like a chess game. It really is. This is about strategy. And this is about the good guys not always getting over on the bad guys. The bad guys get a lot of upper hands. And in the end, what happens to you through this entire film is you become stressed. You become a bit frantic. But because of that, you become very invested and involved because you're not sure what's going to happen to James Bond. There is there's danger, there's mayhem, there's a potential for his murder. And I don't always get that from the most recent films. I, I, I do feel like sometimes as much as you see, for example, Daniel Craig's Bond getting beaten up, you don't always feel like the superhero in the end is, is going to get it until, of course, no time to die when he got it. That surprised us all. But now maybe, maybe because of No Time to Die, the fact that you can see Bond blow up, your mind has reset itself. Just, just, just stay with me on this craziness right now. Your mind as a Bond fan has reset itself and you're thinking to yourself, I know I've seen this movie before, but, but what if this time in some other multiverse Marvel DC dimension, what if he doesn't survive? <laughs> what if it's re revamped and Red Grant wins the day? You know, he, he kills him on that train, et cetera. So you feel this, and I mean, it's like a single digit percentage of your brain, but you feel this trepidation and it does it so well. That's the director, that's the actors, that is the writers, that's the sound and all the tropes coming together. Now, what I've also enjoyed because I am a child, I'm a 55 year old child, like you're a child, and I don't mean that in the chronological sense, I mean that in the mature sense, I've also loved all the gadgetry. I mean, I've, I've loved the hats, I love the clothing. Yes, I did this on purpose. When he gets called with the little pager, he's wearing this type of a gingham purplish shirt. This is what I do for you. I hope you appreciate it. But the gadgetry, I mean, you know, the watches. Hold on a second. You know, the watches with the garrote strings. Um, the, the really cool rings that they have, even, you know, the fact that you've got the baddies just destroying people with a click of a button. You've got all of these amazing things. You've got the, you've got the, the bullions. Look at that. The bullions, the bullions, the bullions. You know, you've got little flat props that are really special. And of course you've got cases that blow up. I'm just saying, well, they don't blow up, but you know what I mean. They, they, it's a gadget case. So this is, these are, everybody says Goldfinger. When you think of like, oh, name an iconic Bond film. Of course they're gonna go Goldfinger. There's something to be said about that. And we'll, we'll revisit that next year during the 60th anniversary of Goldfinger. But this year, In From Russia With Love, to me, this Bond film has all of the early tropes. Dr. No didn't, really have the props. 
you know, had some of the one liners, but I mean, this has a little bit of the humor, the intrigue, the espionage, the story. Bond is Bond. Bond is not just an assassin. He is a spy. He's a gentleman spy that often has to woo his way through things. Sorry, sorry, not sorry, not sorry. He uses his sensuality, his sexuality, like P.S. Real Spies did. This movie has that in droves. It has baddies. It's got henchmen. It's got explosions. It's got vehicles. It's got gadgetry. It's got Q branch. It's got Q. <laughs> it's got interactions with M that are sometimes a little bit salty. They're, they're not always positive. It's got money penny. If you were playing James Bond bingo at the uh, 55 plus center, can't believe they call that here in the States, but they do, which means I'd be included. I'd say the, the, the older age home. Hmm. And you were playing bingo and you went down your bingo card of all the things that make great Bond films great from Russia with love would absolutely come on top. I'm sorry, even more so than I think Goldfinger. Argue with me below. But because of that, because I've, I've actually think I've made a study of these Bond films over the years, talking to Calvin Dyson and Joe Darlington and other people, that I've been able to come away and provide a very fun analysis in this thing, in this thing. And it's not, it's not my weave, it is, it is my brain. I mean, I, I, I perform an analysis and say, David, this hasn't always been amongst your favorites. It's not been really so much in your top three, certainly. But with your analysis and what you know of Bond films now, has it potentially increased? And the answer is, yeah. And I'm even thinking, wait for it, buckle up. I may have to do a new re-ranking within the next year because I've been jumping in so much into re-watching the Bond films, maybe one every two weeks, actually, three in the morning sometimes, because we have this, as you know, I've said a million times, this hollowness, this emptiness of having a new Bond film. So what do we fill it with? The past, right? The things that we love, or in this particular case, the things that we're wondering, do we love it more than ever? So, <laughs> In this 60th anniversary year, I'm telling you right now, this has now increased. It could possibly be in my top three. Now, asterisk, uh, legal notice, whatever you wanna call it, this is fresh, okay? So think about it. Every time you've seen a fresh Bond film, especially a new, fresh Bond film. It, it just, it, you adore it a little bit more. It's fresh in your mind. It's delicious. You still, you still have it on your tongue, your taste, your eyes, your mind. So I get that. And that's why I want to give this a little bit of time to marinate, to percolate. Dun, 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 if you know that theme, you're older than you think. That's all I'm saying. But I want to give the time to like marinate and bake and find out at the end of the day, do I still adore this movie could it possibly be and have moved up the ranking scale and then we're going to do the ranking again but to give it a really fair shot i've got to watch some of the surrounding films around it right i've got to watch goldfinger and thunderbolt etc but think about this i want to go back for a moment because this is david zaritsky in 2023 talking to you okay summertime it's warm go back all the way to 1963 when this came out. Can you imagine, just take a moment if you will, can you imagine one year after Dr. No, you love Dr. No, it's, 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 it's a juggernaut around the world, etc. But then From Russia With Love comes out, which is like Kennedy's like favorite book, so it's based on that. It's got a lot of focus and rigmarole and press around it, but this comes out and it's even better than Dr. No a sequel, a number two is better in many cases than number one. Can you imagine what people walked away with in their heads? They were shocked. I mean, I'm just gonna call it out, but when we get a, a, a subsequent good movie after another good Bond movie, we're like, 
this is crazy. What's happening here? We're, we're getting two good Bond movies in a row. So you had good in Dr. No, and then you had great. And then right after this, maybe to some people you had amazing, which of course is Goldfinger. And then after Goldfinger, you had Thunderball, which I get it to many people was like, well, you kind of went backwards. It's a great vacation film, but not quite the, the level of hollowed ground that Goldeneye, uh, Goldeneye, listen to me. One track mind, David, maybe. That Goldfinger was. But this, this, I think, had to have anchored the franchise. Stick with me on this one. When you have a good film, any good film, that's the first off, let's take Star Wars, you're wondering to yourself, is it a fluke? Fluke, trust the four. No. Is it a fluke? Or is it a start of something special? And then you had Empire Strikes Back and you were like, ho, 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 I think I'm digging this trajectory. We have good inertia. This is something special. And it was, Star Wars was. So with Dr. No, I guarantee back then people were probably saying to themselves, do we have something special here? Or is the next one going to be kind of milk toast? Now, is this just kind of like a, a crazy Technicolor adventure of some gentleman good-looking spy? Nope. 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 Because From Russia With Love came out and it cemented what Bond is and could be. So in this 60th year anniversary, I think we need to celebrate more than the parts and pieces of the movie itself. It's easy to do that. This is what we like. We like the henchmen. We like the color. We like the locations. We like how Sean Connery acts. You've seen all the videos. I'm sure there'll be more. But I'm actually telling you to step back a moment and understand how vital, how important this film was and is to the Bond franchise being what it is today. I probably would not be standing in my basement my archive, my collection, whatever you want to dress it up as, with a room full of collectibles, wearing Bond clothing in 2023, if this film wasn't the film that it was, if it wasn't the hit, because it really created the trajectory, the excitement, and then the expectation for Goldfinger and many others. And you could argue, and you may be right, that it wasn't until many, many Bond films later that things tripped up, that maybe it wasn't the greatest film, maybe it wasn't uh, a better film, or maybe it wasn't the best film, but there is somebody for every film out there. Yeah, I, I know, crazy. There is somebody out there that their favorite Bond film, wait for it, wait for it, is A View to a Kill. <laughs> You've gone mad, David. No, it's true, it's true. I never met them. But they're out there and they exist and they'll comment below in a very angry fashion. But that's the truth. From Russia with love, you're going to be hard pressed not to find somebody that doesn't adore this film. I'm there. I'm, I'm just absolutely jazzed about the film. I'm jazzed about rewatching it. And I'm really jazzed about celebrating it. And we're going to do it in a lot of different ways. We're going to do it in events, physically, through music, through style, fashion. It's all going to be happening this year and beyond because this is a film worth celebrating. Is it the best Bond film? I gotta give it time. I know. It's like, David, really? You're not gonna have any conclusion? I will say this. I'll give you this little morsel, baby bird. Um, it's one of the best. It could be, it could be in my top three. But we'll have to wait for the ranking, give it a little bit of time, like I said, to marinate to really determine. Okay, just wanted to connect with you on that. In the meantime, I have a suggestion tonight, now that you watched this video and preheated it, go watch it. Go put on From Russia With Love. Give me your opinion. Comment down below. Is it in your top three? Is it in your top two? Is it your favorite? let me know. Or maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't even like the film. I'd love to hear your comments below. I read every single one. I know. It's like, where does he find the time? I just get a big, strong cup of coffee and I just railroad right through them. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Enjoy. This has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. 
Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.